Wow. In general, uh, <laughs> it is more difficult. Uh, thanks, Barbara, for the introduction. Also, uh, thanks to the organizer to give the physiologist who I am to talk about the impact of yogurt on uh, appetite control, energy intake, body composition. Uh, in general, in physiology, uh, when we address an issue, uh, we are seeking explanations uh, in order to ultimately better intervene. So uh, I will also do that today uh, by trying to answer the following question. Is it possible that yogurt might be a facilitator of appetite control? If yes, why? Um, I have not prepared a disclosure slide. You would have read that uh, I received grants from Nestle, Wyatt, Dairy Farmers of Canada, Dairy uh, Research Institute in the US, and I would have also told you that uh, I have a particular sympathy for this uh, research field. My father was a, a cheesemaker, so uh, the study of the effects of dairy is uh, to some extent dear in my heart. So is it possible that yogurt uh, can modify appetite control? If yes, why? Let's start with the most simple answer, a replacement effect. A displacement effect of less healthy food, according to which an effect of yogurt consumption might promote benefits just via the reduction of the consumption of uh, sweetened beverage, as it was shown by uh, this uh, group, uh, Skinner et al., some years ago, in uh, children. So uh, we might reasonably argue that if there is a regular yogurt consumption, there might be less energy-dense food, less high-fat foods, and then, by the way, uh, a facilitation due to the reduced consumption of less desirable foods. Uh, this has been uh, also examined recently in a more standardized context, the laboratory context, by French investigators who compared yogurt to chocolate bar containing more fat, more sugar, and calorie for calorie as a preload. Yogurt was a, a, a promoter of a facilitation of appetite control, lower hunger sensations, desire to eat, greater fullness. But there was no difference in the time to request uh, the following dinner and also no difference in subsequent energy intake. Of course, we wish to modify appetite sensation, but we ultimately also wish to change energy intake with the dream to have some impact on energy, on body weight, and composition. Second explanations. The most obvious one, as indicated by Dr. Fisberg, there are um, good nutrients in yogurt and some nutrients which have been specifically associated with the control of energy intake. This is the case of calcium. And I like referring to a concept that was introduced by Michael Tordoff some years ago when he described the hypothesis of a calcium-specific appetite control. So uh, this was derived in animals, and one of the key arguments is that calcium deficiency uh, favors a preferential calcium intake when the opportunity is given. So uh, our interpretation might be that if such a calcium-specific control exists, it might be a 
defense mechanism to protect, mechan to protect homeostasis against the side effects resulting uh, from not enough calcium in the diet and not enough to exert uh, the regulatory role of the mineral. So, uh, of course, the next question is, is it possible to see some indication in humans about the calcium-specific appetite control? So uh, we tried to do that some years ago in a preliminary study, a small clinical trial uh, in which we specifically recruited very low calcium consumers, not necessarily uh, diagnosed deficient individuals, but our criteria is, uh, in this case, less than 600 milligrams per day. And they were subjected to a 15-week weight-reducing program, being supervised by a dietitian, giving the same guidelines to the control subjects receiving a placebo versus those receiving a calcium plus vitamin D supplementation. You see that the outcome on body weight was not the same. In fact, if we compare pre and post values in this case, this decrease of one kilo of body weight was not statistically significant by itself, which might lead some people to say that our dietitian was not brilliant in this case. In fact, she was just doing the same for the two conditions. Uh, and weight loss, as well as fat loss, was, uh, was greater in supplemented individuals. And when we were using a buffet-type meal to measure ad libitum energy intake before and after the protocol, you see, for instance, that spontaneous ad libitum lipid intake was increased in the control group and uh, decreased in the supplemented group a significant difference between the two trends and maybe reinforcing the idea that even in these subjects, calcium need may be a driver for modulate appetite control. Uh, proteins uh, are also a player. We like saying in physiology that uh, Proteins is the category of macronutrient that has the greatest thermogenic activity and also that has a more pronounced impact on the control of energy intake. An example in this case, uh, a study performed in Toronto in the lab of Dr. Harvey Anderson. Uh, using a preload uh, that consisted of either water or water plus whey protein uh, with these, uh, this amount of protein in each condition. Uh, I focus on the cumulative uh, energy intake. Uh, I mean here the ad libitum energy intake during the buffet ty the type meal which followed the preload plus the calorie content of the preload. And in each case, uh, there was a full compensation with a particularly pronounced reduction in total energy intake after the 40 gram whey protein uh, preload supplementation. Uh, let's talk about yogurt. To some extent, this was uh, re-examined recently by Douglas and colleague who use a, um, a Greek yogurt uh, snack as a preload with different protein contents, uh, and the control was a no snack situation. Uh, according to other studies, this, uh, this, high, uh, yogurt, this high protein yogurt reduced hunger, increased fullness, and delayed subsequent eating, so the time to request the subsequent meal was longer uh, for the high protein diet. So satiety was prolonged in this case. 
uh, but the 600 kcal snack content was not fully compensated despite a lower subsequent energy intake at dinner time. I would be tempted to say if the delay had been standardized, ultimately we might even have seen a difference in energy intake. Uh, also, some biomarkers fitting with the global story. Do we see some hormonal adaptations that are concordant with an impact of yogurt, of dairy on appetite sensation? Just one example, again from a Canadian study that was recently uh, reported. Uh, Again, it is important to emphasize that low calcium consumers were recruited and subjected to a two-week diet restriction program, uh, and a, a subgroup received a low dairy treatment and the other group a high dairy. The concordant hormonal change was pertaining to PYY, which is a, an hormone known to produce reducing effect on energy intake. Under the high dairy condition, uh, there was an increase in the peptide when tested uh, in a meal test. So during four hours during the meal test, and you see the change when there was the low dairy condition. On the left, uh, the total area under the curve, indicating that the high dairy increased the concentration of the peptide and the opposite for the low dairy condition. Dr. Fisberg referred to the food matrix of uh, yogurt. It is indeed a flexible food having the possibility to be modified, uh, to have a, a modification on the structures independently of the nutrient content. An example that used this, this strategy uh, in a mixed manner, so the Luke et al. study, the authors enrich yogurt uh, with fiber and uh, it was also here a, a, a study of uh, supplementation of nutrients since they added proteins to the, the mixture, uh, which promoted a decrease in subjective appetite as well as a decrease in subsequent energy intake. Uh, I show you uh, <laughs> results of a work that is uh, not yet published. Uh, we also try to, uh, to cook, to, f to do some food design in order to strictly perform some modification of the structure of yogurt without having a change in the nutrient content of the food. So the target was uh, isocaloric, isoproteinemic, isovolumetric yogurt formulation to see if a strict change in the food matrix might per se influence spontaneous food intake. So in this case, our preload, the yogurt, was uh, given two hours before the buffet type meal. So we had a schedule with a clinical mind we were saying in the real life of people who might be hungry between a breakfast and a lunch time, uh, the snack would be welcome here. And it is then a more realistic way to test the compound under free living conditions. We had uh, five conditions uh, to which were submitted all, uh, every subject. So uh, the control was yogurt three with a ratio of um, <clears throat> uh, casein on whey protein of 2.8 on one. You have the reference here about, uh, in milk. And we were able to modify the composition to have a ratio of 1.5 to one. So we were increasing 
the ratio of the rapidly available protein, that is whey protein, while keeping the same amount of protein. And the other formulations were uh, formulations with uh, an addition of fibers. So <clears throat> I draw your attention on two results. The comparison of yogurt one with uh, a high ratio of whey compared to the control. A substantial decrease in energy intake at lunchtime during the buffet type meal. Uh, we also had this trend with uh, yogurt 4, and the particularity in this case is that it was more appreciated, perceived as more palatable, with increased hunger feelings, but despite that, a lower energy intake. We will certainly pursue the, the evaluation of this type of formulation. So, just to make brief calculation about the compensation, we had at 10 o'clock a yogurt of 60 calories that was inducing a decrease in subsequent energy intake of almost 200. So uh, that was a step towards the good direction. Uh, the final explanation, again, according to the first talk of this symposium, yogurt can be the vector of microorganism. In the field of obesity, uh, we become sensibilized to the issue of uh, gut microbiota. And uh, the group of uh, Jeff Gordon was particularly uh, good to emphasize some differences in the bacteria profile of obese individuals uh, versus uh, lean individuals. So in animals, as well as in humans, we have indications of a, uh, of a greater relative abundance of uh, firmicutase compared to another major category of bacteria, the bacteroidetase. And uh, recently, we uh, tackled this issue uh, by benefiting of a formulation uh, combining uh, a lactobacillus rhamnosus CG with a small amount of prebiotics to increase the viability of the bacteria. And we tested this formulation. We, in this case, it was peel, but it could be uh, easy to incorporate the probiotics in the yogurt. So uh, you see in women over 12 weeks, always with the protocol of the dietetic supervision with guidelines aiming at a specific energy deficit, uh, weight loss, fat loss, were greater in the supplemented group compared to the placebo group. And the physiologists calculated the energy equivalent of delta fat and delta lean body mass to reach uh, the conclusion that the estimated body energy deficit was about 50% greater under these conditions in supplemented uh, women. So just a few words before concluding about, um, uh, about uh, weight variations. Do we have some indications that yogurt might influence per se uh, body weight stability um, and could be used uh, in the context of body weight management? Let's start with um, maybe the oldest study uh, that was published uh, some years ago by Professor Michael Zemel, who told me that he had the data uh, much before the publication, but he waited and waited because he didn't know exactly what to tell about the finding of a reduction of almost five kilos of body fat mass over a year in uh, African-American subjects taking a yogurt per day. So that was the first indication. And uh, recently, it received the support of population data. Uh, it is small. This is not because I do not wish that you see the data. 
uh, I borrowed the, directly this table from the, the paper of the group of Dr. Paul Jakes. In Quebecois, we prefer saying Paul Jacques. And briefly, uh, they uh, measured over time uh, body weight change in individuals reporting, uh, let's say, a significant consumption, uh, I am seeking the, yeah, three servings per week. So we talk about almost regular consumers being compared to almost non-consumers. And you should see here, if you have good highs, that weight gain over time was lower in, um, uh, in uh, regular yogurt consumers. So, uh, and the last slide of results, uh, the last one but not the least, the very interesting work of uh, Mozaffarian et al, who recently reported body weight changes uh, <coughs> over four years in a large number of people when analyzing data on a per food group basis to conclude that uh, there are nuts but uh, also among the champions of uh, body weight stability uh, is yogurt compared to many other foods. So uh, is it possible that yogurt can facilitate appetite control? Yes, maybe via the replacement of less healthy foods by providing uh, essential nutrients and also because of the flexible food matrix that give the possibility to those being interested by functional foods. The last slide and not the least from the physiologist uh, <clears throat> Clearly, we tend to describe yogurt as a healthy food, having potential benefits on energy balance. And you see the list of factors that I investigated over the last year, uh, which are all associated with the proneness to be in positive energy balance. High fat, high density diet, sedentariness, short sleep duration, demanding cognitive work on healthy behaviors, chemical pollution, weight cycling. So uh, clearly we are living in an obesi obesogenic world and even if we have good results your, with yogurt, please do not present yogurt as a magic pill to take in charge the obesity epidemic. That's it, thanks for your attention. Thank you.